Today we celebrate the great birthday of the church, Pentecost Sunday. We hear in today's gospel, the paraclete, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring all things to your mind. Now, our Lord kept all his promises to the apostles, including this one. Today we remember how he sent the Holy Ghost upon the apostles, Mary, and the church, the greatest gift the church has ever received. Fortified by this gift, the, Holy, the apostles continued the work of our Lord in building up the kingdom of God through his bride, the church, which he had founded. Now we call the Sundays to come the Sundays after Pentecost. In this time, the mission of the Holy Ghost was begun by the apostles, the establishment and propagation of the church till the end of time. So we have an octave of Pentecost, uh, each day to pray for one of the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost. So let us continue the Holy Ghost's twofold mission today. Firstly, to teach, sanctify and govern the church, and secondly, to enlighten, console, strengthen and sanctify every individual soul. Firstly, to teach, sanctify and govern the church. The Holy Ghost enables the church to do all that is required for the salvation of all men. The church consists of human beings, of course, a human nature, but also has a divine nature, this is the Holy Ghost, which our Lord promised he would send. So could the church teach the truth, depending on her strength alone? Of course not. Of course the answer is no, for the church is composed of human beings. The Pope is a man, and so are bishops and priests. But men are not infallible. They err and lead others into error. If the church was purely a human institution, she would be liable to error, and we would have no security then in what she teaches. It is therefore evident that the church, in order to be infallible in doctrine and morals, needs something else to rely on other than her own strength. This, of course, is the Holy Ghost. Christ sent her and promised that he would be with her until the end of time. Therefore, we must adhere to the doctrines of Holy Mother the Church, as well with the Holy Ghost guiding her. She cannot err with this divine help. So she says that in doctrines and dogmas pronounced. So in 1950 declared the doctrine of the Assumption of Our Lady into Heaven, reiterating something the Church has always believed in, that Our Lady was assumed body and soul into Heaven, and that to be a Catholic we must believe in this. So the Holy Ghost teaches the Church her doctrine and then sanctifies the Church the merits of Christ's redemption on the cross through a fountain with living water, to which we cannot gain access to except by divine grace or help. This is imparted to us by the Holy Ghost, who enkindles in our souls the desire for sanctity and confers on us sanctifying grace. In baptism and the other sacraments, we receive this. Let us be thankful that we belong to the Church, as amongst the Protestant sects, there are no sacraments except maybe baptism. As a Catholic then, being a member of the mystical body of Christ, we have a claim for graces in order to lead a good life, keep the commandments and keep from sin. But these must be short through daily prayer and frequent reception of confession and attendance at Holy Mass. Now the Holy Ghost also directs and governs the church. St John Chrysostom says, if it were not for the Holy Ghost, there would be no shepherds and teachers in the church. By the laying on of hands, holy orders are given to men. The Holy Ghost confers on bishops and priests their power. Also, as a government governs the people by her officers, so too the Holy Ghost governs the church by the bishops and priests as their instruments and defends her against all enemies so that the gates of hell can never prevail against her. As we know, as the church progresses through the years and is now in the third millennium, uh, over the past 2,000 years, countries and kingdoms have come and gone. 
but the church is still here despite her many difficulties in the past, present and future. And it is true she had suffered many grievous losses. North Africa was all Catholic once, as was all Europe. Yet she grows new branches like the tree near a stream and has spread into Asia, the Americas and elsewhere. Now it is easy to despair about the state of the world and the state of the church, but it is obvious if she was reliant on human help alone, she would have disappeared a long time ago, like many other kingdoms that no longer exist. The Holy Ghost is at the helm of St Peter, directing and governing the church, and we can have hope and trust in this, despite evidence often to the contrary. The Holy Ghost is there, of course, to enlighten, console, strengthen and sanctify every individual soul. All graces are given to us by the Holy Ghost. No man can say the Lord Jesus but by the Holy Ghost. So said St Paul to the Corinthians chapter 12. So the Holy Ghost enlightens us. It's there to help and help us to know what is good, true and salutary. For example, the apostles, for three years they were taught by our Lord but they all scattered and deserted him at the Passion. At Pentecost, all received confirmation by the Holy Ghost and then defended the name of the Lord, illiterate fishermen who never spoke before in public. They announced and defended the religion of our Lord, crucified before princes, princesses, learned men and nations of every tongue. The same Holy Ghost enlightens us too and is there to help us to make good confessions and also to guide us as well and to stand up for the faith. The Holy Ghost is there to console us as well. To live a Catholic life is difficult and indeed it is becoming harder and harder as we are persecuted outside the church and within the church. Yet our Lord sent the Holy Ghost to console the disciples when they were told that they should no longer preach in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, they said, we ought to obey God rather than men, Acts chapter 5. And the same Holy Ghost helps us if we keep our hearts undefiled by sin and free from worldly inclinations and love the Lord our God with our whole heart, our whole mind and our whole soul. And the Holy Ghost is there to strengthen us, our Lord said, you will receive the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon you. Book of Acts chapter 1. Now the apostles hid from the Jews after the Passion, and even hid when they had seen our Lord risen from the dead, as he appeared to them in a locked room. Yet when they received the Holy Ghost, they went boldly proclaiming the Lord's truth. Let the house of Israel know most certainly that God had made both Lord and Christ the same Jesus whom you are crucified. So said St Peter, Acts chapter 2. And the same Holy Ghost will help us, whether at work or in public or at warfare with our enemies, as St Paul says to the Romans chapter 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So our tribulation or distress or famine or nakedness or danger or persecution or the sort. The Holy Ghost sanctifies our soul. Before the Pentecost, the apostles were subject to many imperfections and frailties. They were not meek of heart, all of them were ambitious, all wanted the first place in the kingdom of our Lord. Saint Peter, of course, denied our Lord three times. Yet after the coming of the Holy Ghost, they were conspicuous for their humility, meekness and charity, and they were men of heroic virtue and extraordinary charity. The Holy Ghost gave them these gifts, sanctifying grace, the three ver theological virtues of faith, hope and charity, the moral virtues and the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost, wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety and fear of the Lord. We receive these gifts in baptism and confirmation, in the measure needed to enable us to serve God and obtain our eternal salvation. And the Holy Ghost will abound more fully in us if we are free from sin and will help us to become saints. 
Saint Teresa of Jesus said, If we do not become saints, it is not because the Holy Ghost does not will it. He was sent to us and comes to us for this very purpose. But it is because we do not give full liberty to his action. And this is the point where we often fail. We do not let the Holy Ghost fully come into our souls to transform us. We want to follow the ways of the world and not the ways of God. The world may allow people to divorce and remarry and so on, but God's law does not allow it. The world may allow people to break the commandments and get away with it and not even care, but God does not. If we subject our will to the Holy Ghost, he will help us to become saints. Therefore, the effects of the Holy Ghost in the church and our soul are to teach, sanctify and govern the church and to enlighten, console, strengthen and sanctify every individual soul by showing us what is right and wrong, guiding and consoling us. However, only if we avoid mortal sin, for by sin the Holy Ghost is driven out of our souls. As we read in the Hot Book of Wisdom, chapter 1, for the Holy Spirit of discipline will free from the deceitful and will withdraw himself from thoughts that are without understanding and he will not abide when iniquity comes in. As we see in the Veni Sancta Spiritus, written by the Archbishop of Canterbury in 1228, uh, Bishop Stephen, Rest art thou in our toil, most sweet, refreshment in the noonday heat, and solace us in our grief. Therefore, on this great day of Pentecost, let us pray to the Holy Ghost to enlighten and strengthen us all the days of our lives, that we may live holy and happily and make a happy end. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen.